This video is on conceptual model. Conceptual model focuses on the data requirements of business, and it consists of the following three models, ER, EER, and UML, which builds upon each other. Its focus is to basically collect business data requirements, so it is implementation independent. This is the first model that must be created before moving on to the logical model and the external data model. Let's go over the ER or the entity relationship model first, which is comprised of rectangles, ellipses, and rhombus. Rectangles are entity types. Ellipses are attributes of entity types. And rhombuses are relationships. Entity is literally in the model name. And it is simply a thing or being like a wine or a person. Entity type is a term used to define a collection of entities with similar characteristics like people. For example, people is an entity type and the entities within it can be Bob, Sally, and Joe. Attributes are basically properties of entity types. For example, we got the entity type people and the entities within it, Bob, Sally, and Joe. And we have their attributes like their first and last name, their address, phone number, marital status, and so forth. It's something that defines and describes the entity types. Unique attributes like social security numbers are considered key attribute type since they are distinct from each individual entity. Things like shoe size of a person isn't a key attribute since other entities can have the same shoe size and that number can be repetitive. And that number can be repeat, so it's not unique. If the entity doesn't have a key attribute type of its own, it is a weak entity type and it borrows it from a strong entity which has a key attribute type. Composite attribute type like address can be broken down into simple or atomic attribute type. For example, address can be broken down into things like zip code, country, street name, and apartment numbers. There are also attributes that are multi-valued and not single-valued. For example, phone number attribute can have multiple variables since one person can technically have more than one phone number. There is also a thing called derived attribute like age, which means it can be pulled from another attribute like date of birth. All right, let's take a quick look at this diagram. It's a very simple one. There is a student and course entities. Student can have multiple students. Student has a attribute student ID, student name, and student age. Student ID is a unique key or a primary key because it is unique and every ID will be different and it is what is used to differentiate all the students. Student name and student age could overlap. And there's the course with the attribute course ID and course name. Here, course ID is the unique primary key. Course name can also be a prime key as well, as long as there's no overlapping names. The relationship is shown between student and course entity types. And the relationship is study, because the student studies the course. Let's look at another diagram. Here we have the entity types, customer, card, and dependent. Customer has attribute types, customer ID, name, nick, and date of birth. As you could see here, customer ID is underlined. The underline means it's a primary key. The card also has card ID attribute underlined. And the dependent has name underlined. As you could see, the entity type dependent is double squared. In the legend shown below, that means it is a weak entity because it borrows an attribute from the customer, which is customer name, and the customer name becomes the key attribute type. This is because dependent entity type doesn't have a key attribute of its own. If it has double ellipses, it means it's multi-valued attributes. Once again, that's things like phone numbers or houses because people can technically have more than one houses, more than one phone numbers, and so on. Uh, let's take a look at the relationships. Relationships are represented using a rhombus, and they present association between one or more entities. For example, entity type, business, and customer. Entity customer buys something from entity business. So relationship can be created between the two. Here we have employee and department. Employee works for a department. So there's a relationship. The rhombus can be seen as two arrows pointing from one entity to another. 
the degree corresponds to the number of entity types in the relationship. So unary means there's only one entity involved, binary means there's two involved, ternary means there's three involved. In this example, we have two, employee and department. The roles are basically added for clarification. For example, teaches from entity teacher and student or works in from employee and office. Relationship types can be characterized with cardinalities, which is basically the minimum and the maximum number of relationship instances that an entity can participate in. As you could see in this example, we have 0 colon n on the left side, 1 colon 1 on the right side towards department. On the left side is the minimum cardinality. On the right side is the maximum cardinality. So department can have minimum of 0 employee and maximum of n employee, which is any integers. Employee must have at least minimum of one department and they could only have maximum of one department. This implies that employees can work for only one department and it has to be at least one, while department can have no employee up to any integers. There is a partial participation and total participation. Partial means some entities may not participate in the relationship, while total means all entities need to participate in the relationship, resulting in an existence dependency. Minimum cardinalities can be either 0 and 1, while maximum can be either 1 or n. 0 means that an entity can exist without being connected to another entity, while 1 means entity can only be involved in only one instance. n means any integer bigger than 1 and it can be called m. This gives the four combination 1, 1, 1, n, n, 1, m, n. Maximum cardinality relationships, because the relationship is based on the maximum value. Since relationship types are characterized per their maximum cardinality for each of their roles. Additionally, relationship rhombus can have attribute just like an entity. If it's 1, 1 or 1, n, it can be moved to a participating entity type, but for m, n, it belongs to the relationship rhombus. All right, let's do a quick review session. In this diagram, we have book, author, and reader entity types. Book has publisher, title, year, and ISBN attributes, with ISBN being underlined and it being a unique primary key. Author has URL, name, bio, country, passport ID, as its attributes, with passport ID and country being primary keys. And then reader has name and ID card, ID card being the primary key. There's a relationship between book and the author, as well as book and reader. For relationship between book and author, book needs to have minimum of one author and it could have maximum of n author. Author doesn't need to have a book, but they could have as many books as they want. Between book and reader, book can have at least minimum of one reader and maximum of n readers. And reader doesn't need to borrow any books, so zero, up to n amount, which is any integer amount. The ER model does have its limitations, like the temporal constraints, no consistency across multiple relationship types, no support for definition of functions, and inability to specify domains that can be assigned to attributes. Next, we have EER model, which is simply an ER model with three new concepts added on, specialization, categorization, and aggregation. Specialization is simply a set of subclasses of entity types, for example, sports player superclass will have subclass football player, soccer player, and tennis player. Opposite of specialization is generalization, where you go from like singers and painter entity types to artist entity types above it, and making it more abstract. Specialization can be defined based on its disjointness and completeness constraints, where disjointness constraint specifies the subclasses an entity of the superclass belong, while completeness constraint defines whether all entities of the superclass belong to one of the subclasses or not. Disjointness constraint can be set to either disjoint or overlap specialization, where disjoint means entity can be a member of at most one of the subclass, and overlap means entity can be member of more than one subclass. For completeness constraint, it can be either total or partial, where total specialization means every entity must belong to a superclass and none of the subclasses, and partial means entity can only belong to superclass and to none of the subclasses. Alright, let's talk example. First we have the disjointness constraint, which specifies what subclasses an entity of the superclass can belong to. So where it can vehicle belong to, either scooter, car, or truck. 
You could set it to either disjoint or overlap. If you put disjoint, the vehicle has to be in either scooter, car, or truck. If you put overlap, the vehicle can be scooter, car, and truck all together and have overlaps. Then we have the completeness constraint, which indicates whether all entities of the superclass should belong to one of these subclasses or not. And this can be set to total or partial, where total means every entity in the superclass must be a member of some subclass. And partial allows entity to only belong to the superclass and to none of the subclasses. Then we have categorization concept, where category means it has subclass that has several potential superclasses. And each superclass is a different entity type. Category is basically a collection of entities that's a subset of the union of the superclasses and is represented using a circle with the U in it. Inheritance in this case means member entity inherits only the attributes and relationship of that superclass. And just like specialization, it can be total or partial where total means all entities of the superclasses belong to the subclass and partial means not all entities belong to the subclass. And then lastly, we have aggregation, which is the third concept introduced in EER model. And aggregation basically combines entity type that are related by a particular relationship type. The aggregated type will have its own attributes and also participate in a relationship. The last conceptual model is the UML, Unified Modeling Language, which is simply an object-oriented system modeling notation. It has a different naming convention, but it pretty much is similar to ER and EER. Class is basically an entity type in UML, and object is entity in UML. And just like ER and EER, class is represented using a rectangle, but it is broken down into three parts or sections. We have the upper part that has the entity type name, middle part that has the attributes, and the bottom part that has the getter setter methods, which are basically ways to get the objects. Access methods can have access modifiers, which are minus, plus, and sharp signs that specify who can access it. Minus means that it can only be accessed by the class itself. Plus means it can be accessed by any other class. And sharp means it can be accessed by both the class and its subclasses. And this is to enforce information hiding, which is ultimately for security. In UML, relationships are also called associations. And instead of using n for cardinalities for any integers, you're gonna utilize asterisk sign, which denotes the value of n in UML. The association can be unidirectional or bidirectional, and it shows how one navigates to another. If it's bidirectional, you're not going to see any arrows, and if it's unidirectional, you're going to see an arrow pointing from one entity to another. The hollow arrow represents a specialization in UML as well. Details like total partial or disjoint overlap can be added next to the arrow. Aggregation is also possible in UML and can be either shared or composite aggregation, where shared means the part object can simultaneously belong to multiple composite objects, and composite aggregation means that the part object can belong only to one composite. Shared is represented by a hollow diamond, while composite is represented by a field diamond, and they'll be marked closer to the aggregated entity.